Developing on Windows today is much better than it ever used to be thanks to things like WSL, but there's still one big pain point, which is testing on Safari. But luckily, it's actually possible and it's relatively easy to set up and get started with. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Hello, my front end friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And one way we can be less frustrated with CSS and just front end in general is to be able to test on Safari if we're on a Windows machine. So let's dive right in. And before we get into the nitty gritty of everything, I just wanna say a big thank you to Mattia who runs Joy of Code and who is the one who uh, wrote the post on how we can actually do this. So everything will be linked for Matthias stuff in the description down below if you want any of the things I talk about. You can see right here we have this site, uh, this post that he put together on setting everything up and I'm going to be following his instructions to do it. So if you prefer the written version, go check that out. And he also has a video looking at this as well. So I'll link to his YouTube uh, too. And what we want to be doing is testing this out, getting it running and seeing how we could test something like this where I used container queries to build out this, this layout here that wasn't the greatest, but um, I wanna make sure this is actually working also in Safari. So to be able to do this, um, Matthias thing uses Playwright, which is a way that we can test modern web apps and it's very easy to set up and get running. So the first thing we wanna do is to initialize the project, but we need somewhere to initialize it. So what I'm going to do is just come onto my desktop and I'm, in, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm just gonna call it browser testing, but you can call it whatever you wanna call it. Uh, it really doesn't matter. And what's important is we have hyper or wherever you're in your terminal to be inside that folder. So I'm gonna do CD for change directory, put a space, and then we're just gonna take this folder and drop it there. So even if you didn't put it on your desktop, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about navigating to it. You just push return after and it will be in the right place. So that's nice and easy. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna do an npm init hyphen y. So the init is to initialize the project and hyphen y just means take all the default values because if you don't do the hyphen y, it asks you some questions that for this, we don't really care. Um, so you can see it's gone ahead and it set all of that up and we're good to go. The next thing, and my positioning and stuff on here is a little weird, so I think it's because I zoomed in. So let's just move things around a little bit quickly here. Uh, we can leave that there actually. I just wanna make this a bit bigger so it doesn't get all mucked up for you guys. And so yeah, we have our browser testing. And so the next thing we wanna do is after that, we want to uh, get Playwright set up and installed here. So in there, we can use this, uh, the I, or let's just paste it in. So command shift V. The I is for install. And then the hyphen D is for, it's for development purposes. And then this is what we're installing, which is Playwright with their, their tests there. And the next thing we need to do now that we have Playwright installed in the project is to actually install these default browsers. Now, when I'm running through this step, it's not actually installing them all right now, but you should run through and you'll see it all being installed. It takes a little bit of time to install the three different browsers. You'll get Chromium, Firefox, as well as WebKit, which is going to let us test Safari. And the next thing we wanna do is update our package.json file. So in my browser testing, I wanna open this in VS Code now. So I can just write code and put dot, and that should open it for you in VS Code. If ever that doesn't work and it does not open for you there, just open VS Code and navigate to the file and the folder you want and open it. And then we wanna open up this package.json file. And it's nothing too complex that we wanna put in here, but we need to update the scripts so we can actually test the things easily and quickly. Um, and that's about it. So if you look at uh, what Mattia put here, there's the dev dependencies, but I already have that slightly newer version, but that's fine, it should all work. Uh, all I really wanna grab is these scripts that are right here. So I'm gonna take the scripts that we see here and I'm just gonna replace the scripts that are right here. Everything else I can keep exactly like we had here, not a big deal. And I'm gonna hit save on that. So we're, we have updated our package.json. Now we need to do one more thing, which is to create a um, test here. So you can see tests and then browser test.typescript. So you can just create a full, uh, file here, in here, and I'm gonna call it the same thing, browsers.test.typescript. So in here, just make a new file, paste in that name, and then grab what we have here and paste it right in. And what this is doing is it's bringing in the tests. And the really important thing with this to actually be able to run it 
uh, is the, the local host that's here. So you could do local hosts, you can do things that are running, you could put in and you know, google.com and it should work. Uh, so whatever you put here is the site that you want to be testing. So I'm already running this locally, so I can just grab this right here and paste this in right there and hit save. And now I should be able to actually open this and test it. And so to do that, we can open up my terminal in VS Code, which is control backtick, or you can just go to view and it's in here somewhere. You have your terminal that's right there. Once that's opened and you're here, all we need to do is run the test that we want. Do we want to run Chrome, Firefox, or Safari? I want to run my test Safari. So NP, uh, npm run test Safari and hit return. And in just a few seconds, there we go. WebKit has just opened up for me and I'm running WebKit on my computer, which is going to be basically be Safari. I can see if my container queries are working or not. I can check it out. You can see even the scroll bar and everything. Uh, you will get this other little Playwright inspector that also opens up. No big deal. Just leave that open while you're doing your testing. Um, and then so you can see my fonts are actually rendering a little bit differently between the browsers. So maybe that's something that's worth looking into. Uh, you also have your inspector. If you want to come in and inspect things within WebKit, it's going to look a lot like the Safari one. Uh, there's the potential that things are a little bit different between what we're looking at here and what we're actually would be getting in Safari, but this is the rendering engine that Safari uses. So things should basically be extremely similar if they're not exactly the same, but there might be a few little features or extra things in Safari that um, aren't included, but the rendering of the page should be the same. So there we have it. I'm running my page in Safari, <laughs> which is really, really cool. Uh, I can play around with the dev tools, do all the testing that I want, and everything works perfectly fine. Now, if you're wanting to get just into debugging and helping with CSS in general and some of the things we can actually use our dev tools for to be able to make debugging CSS a lot easier, I have a video for you right here where I took a look at that. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Steven, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.